Hello everyone, welcome to Nollywood France channel. My name is Supreme Joseph. Today I'm going to talk about my book, Man of Power. You can see the book here. So the theme of the book talks about the last um, Nigerian presidential election, which is real. But now in fiction, this is what we call historical fiction. So I have to move from uh, reality to fiction. I have to create my own fictional characters, which is quite different from the real characters that provided the material. So this is the world of writers. We are out there, our ears open, our eyes open, to um, scan what is around us. We, uh, we have that um, uh, inner camera uh, that uh, is watching out what's happening around the world. And uh, we don't provide the materials really, but uh, what is very interesting in this world of uh, writing is that other people provide the materials and then you have to choose the genre. How are you going to present it to your readers? Uh, is it going to be non-fiction or is it going to be fiction? But in this book, uh, I decided that I'm going to uh, carve out um, uh, a fictional story and fictional characters that are very compelling from um, from uh, the real story and then my settings uh, also uh, belongs to me because I have to start in the capital city Abuja in uh, that's the first chapter called waiting and again and they and then um, a stage the characters that were in the hotel talking to Shego Adeleke the advisors so uh, um, this book it's so interesting. I enjoyed myself writing it, following the characters. Um, I, I put myself in the place of the reader when I was writing this book. And I have to uh, tell my readers that it's far from what uh, you can get from historical books that will approach the same subject. This is not history, but it's a way to digest history if you want, make it palatable. Uh, if you permit me the word, make it eatable, so that people can enjoy a story uh, that really happened, okay, but now in fiction, and also uh, can understand from my own perspective, how I looked at that story. So there are so many stories flying around in the world, but um, this year I decided to choose this story to make sure I immortalize uh, in, in, uh, the story with fictional characters. Now, uh, a good number of people in Nigeria who will have the opportunity to read this book um, might bring out different reviews okay so it's an interesting book um, and uh, i advise you all to pick it up anywhere you can find it i published this book on amazon and uh, if you go there you can buy it so let me read a passage from this book let me read a passage from this book. The passage I'm going to read will be uh, chapter one. So as you can see, I have my dog here listening to me. The dog is called Pilo. Please do not allow the dog to distract you. It's a funny dog and uh, this dog has uh, accompanied me in my writing uh, career in my office. I have a study here in uh, my house. I'm recording this from my living room. And then Pilo is uh, a good companion, a good writing companion. You can see Pilo sleeping, okay? Uh, okay, now coming back to um, 
a passage from this book waiting. On the night of the election, Shegu Adeleke, also known as Jagaba, was holed up in the luxurious presidential suit of the prestigious Golden Crown Hotel in Abuja with his closest advisors waiting for the announcement of the results. The room was tastefully decorated with an opulent chandelier, a king-size bed with plush bedding, a private jacuzzi, a floor-to-ceiling windows that offered a breathtaking view of the city skyline. The air was thick with the sweet aroma of Cuban cigars and assorted drinks. Glasses clanked as French champagne and whiskey were poured and the room was filled with the delicious aroma of gourmet or dovre. The atmosphere was tense as everyone's eyes were glued to the widescreen TV showing the coalition center's results. As the names of the political parties flashed on the wide TV screen, Shego's advisors made impulsive comments in favor of or against their man, creating an intense debate. Tunde, Shego's right hand man, spoke up first, his voice dripping with arrogance. There was no way we could lose this election. We had rigged it from top to bottom. Bisi, the strategist, scoffed. You may have rigged it today, but that didn't mean we were guaranteed to win. We, were, we still needed to be vigilant and make sure we secured the votes we needed. Kunle, the tech genius, chimes in. I agree with BC. We need to stay alert and make sure we don't miss any irregularities. Tunde rolls his eyes. You two are being paranoid. We've got this under control. And besides, even if there are irregularities, we will just bribe our way out of it. This is eyes flashed with anger. We can't really, no, sorry, we can't rely on bribery forever. We need to start playing the long game and build a sustainable power base. Kunle nods in agreement. This is right. We can't keep relying on shady deals and uh, backroom agreements. We need to start building a legitimate coalition of supporters. Chego listens to his advisor's arguments, but remains silent, deep in thought. Finally, he speaks up. I appreciate your opinions, but let me not forget. But let's not forget why we're here. We are here to win this election by any means necessary. And if that means Playing dirty. Wanna hear me? Then so be it. Tunde brings triumphantly. That's what I'm talking about. Let's show them who's boss. B 
Busy shakes her head, looking disappointed. I can't believe we are stooping to this level. This isn't what politics is supposed to be about. So, politics in Nigeria, is it what it's supposed to be about? Busy in doubt, somehow being cautious of what was going to happen. But others were very confident that they have rigged the election. They, have, they the election uh, were rigged, the presidential and other elections controlled by them. So that's it. The first, uh, that, uh, this is the first passage. But now, in reflection, where the second passage, that's where I'm going to stop, then um, not to give away the book finally. So now let's look at the, uh, just a glimpse into the personality of uh, Shegu Adeliki. Now, his colleagues, when he was young, used to call him the city boy. But now, this, pas this passage tells us more about Shego Adeleke. Listen to it. As the night wore on and tensions rose in the luxury hotel room, Shego Adeleke's thoughts drifted to his past. He remembered the struggles he had faced growing up in poverty and the lengths he had gone to in order to achieve power. In his youth, he had been a street boy who grew up in poverty and had to survive by eating from the slums. He had to fend for himself on the streets, sleeping in abandoned buildings and scrunching for food. He had developed multiple survival tricks and was determined to change his life by walking on eggshells and changing his colors like a chameleon. Now, this is a character that did everything to get there. And in the real world, people will not like him. I mean, my character, Sheikh Madeleke, in the real world. But in the fictional world, he, he tends to entertain the reader, showing that you can be whatever you want to be. Now, for people who are not Nigerians that are following this conversation, Nigeria is in West Africa. In Af uh, Africa is 154 states, and uh, it's uh, one of the biggest countries in Africa. More than 250 million people. And then a character like Shego Adeliki did everything to become the president of Nigeria. And as a writer and uh, in literature, uh, I can say he's an admirable character. Yeah. What's very important here is um, not the values he has ignored. I mean, the moral values he has ignored. Uh, I wouldn't like to be like him. There was some passages I hated him as I was writing. Because when I was young, I was taught different values. Be honest, don't steal, uh, make sure you help others. So those values are what I was taught when I was small and I carried these values to my adulthood and to this age. So if you are a reader, 
of a man of power, I will uh, say, not giving you advice, you can do whatever you like, you can develop the book, you can write your own. Um, it's not to follow or imitate the um, personality traits of uh, Shegun Adeleke, but what is common in this character is ambition. Now ambition has to be controlled somehow. You do you make sure you do not disadvantage others. This is what he did. He needed money. He needed power. He needed to control others. Shebo Adelike is a killer. Drop Baron. He did everything wrong to become the number one character. <laughs> Sorry, the number one uh, citizen of Nigeria. But that's not good. But in my role as a writer, I'm not, I'm not a judge. I'm a witness of the time, of our time. I just write it down. In my own genre, which is fictional, um, uh, a, a fictional book, I leave the reader to take or not to take what I have written, or say, oh, I don't like this book, or I give my review. So thank you very much for watching. Keep on um, watching uh, this channel. I will talk about other books. I have uh, written 13 books, but Man of Power is uh, uh, the book for today. So you can get this book on Amazon and uh, when you get down there, you'll see the prize. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, recommend this channel to your friends. Like it because when you like this video, now the YouTube algorithm will tell others that, okay, there's something happening on Nollywood France channel and also do your best. Just one word, leave a comment. Thank you very much. Until next time, I will continue to entertain you.